Assassins can come in the most unlikely forms, from skilled swordsman to a quiet maid who has been waiting for her revenge. However, in the Bible, when your time is up and God has appointed an assassin, there is no possible way to avoid it. Even if you are a king with hundreds of bodyguards, if you have been marked for a certain outcome, there is no way to avoid God. During this period in time, the Israelites were ruled by judges who were appointed by God. These judges were not like the kings that would later rule over Israel. They did not have the power to tax or to raise an army. Their role was to rise up and deliver the Israelites from their enemies and to administer justice, which had to happen quite a few times. Even in this time period, where an eye for an eye we see God's grace in action again and again. King Eglon found this out the hard way, in the firm of a young man named Dehid. For 18 years King Eglon had maintained a tyrannical rule over the Jewish people. In the Bible, the Moabites are said to have descended from Moab the son of Lot and his oldest daughter, Genesis 1937. The kingdom of Moab stretched north and south of the Arnon River with its capital at Dibon. The Moabites during this time were said to have worshipped the god Chemosh. Chemosh whose name most likely meant destroyer, subduer, or fish god. He is mostly associated with the Moabites, according to Judges 11 verse 24. He seems to have been the national deity of the Ammonites as well. Chemosh was said to provide battle and war victories for the Moabites. There were even Moabite kings who would sacrifice their children to Chemosh to ensure victories. However, back to the Israelites. At this point the Israelites had once again rebelled against God. In turn they had then been given over to the Moabite king to rule them. Not only this but King Eglon had also created treaties with the Ammonites and Amalekites, nations equally hostile to Israel. Together they kept the Israelites locked in a cycle of oppression. Finally, the Jewish people came together and cried out to their Lord for forgiveness. Judges 3 verse 15. The Israelites cried to the Lord for help. So he sent a man named Dehid son of Jerah to save them. Dehid was from the tribe of Benjamin and was trained to fight with his left hand. The Israelites sent Dehid with a gift to King Eglon of Moab. Ahead along with some other men made his way to the king's palace. It was here that they presented him with gifts. This most likely gave Ahud a chance to scope out the palace, check the guard count and overall layout. They then walk back to the border stones of Gilgal, when Ahud then turns around and heads back to the palace. Strapped to his right thigh is a sword. This is a double-edged 12-inch sword. A small enough weapon to kill with but also conceal well. With the sword being placed on the right thigh, potentially palace guards only glanced at his left thigh to check for weapons as he re-entered the palace. Once Ahid is inside he makes his way up to the king. King Eglant may have been surprised to see this man again, along with the fact that he had come alone, no party, no protection or other soldiers with him. He leans in and says king, I have a secret message for you. This very moment has given Ahid the undivided attention of King Eglant. Men in power love to know what is going on and of course inside information is invaluable. Straight away he clears the room of all prying ears and eyes. Alone in the throne room Mehad tells King Eglon, I have a message from God for you. Now King Eglon may have worshipped Chemosh, but you can guarantee he knew of the Israelites God. Standing up when he hears the Lord's name, Eglon then leans in to learn a mystical truth that the God of Ehud has given him. At this moment Ahud grabs the sword from his right thigh and plunges it into the king's belly. It is during this action that we find out that the king is actually extremely overweight. Judges 3 verse 22. The sword went into Eglon's belly so far that even the handle sank in and the fat closed around it. The point of the blade came out his back. Ahud left the sword inside Eglon. 12 inches or a 30 centimeter sword is now hidden in King Eglon's enormous belly. Even the handle is hidden. The storyteller really wants us to know exactly how large the king was, as in ancient times you had to work hard for your food. Being obese was an extreme luxury, as this meant you had excess in food, drink and wine. The fact that Ahid had been left alone with the king shows how complacent and full of himself that Eglon must have become for he now thought that no one could be a potential threat to him. As King Eglin now lay on the ground in the throes of death, Ahed makes sure the room is locked. 
He then makes his getaway most likely out a bathroom window. King Eglin is left to die alone in his room. His attendants come back to check on him, but as the door is locked, they think he is relieving himself on the toilet and will come back later. What a way to die. God allowed a moment, a human moment to take out a king. Kings are always surrounded by guards and minders, yet King Eglin was at his weakest, and God used a left-handed man to take out a king who for 18 years had been able to keep the Israelites trapped in a terrible existence. Silently ahead escapes, he casually walks his way out of the palace and it is not long until he is at the border again. The palisades now realize something is terribly wrong and break into the king's room, only to find him dead. Terror and panic would have swept through the palace in the moments after finding out their king was dead. According to the Bible, the sword was still swallowed in the large belly of Eglon, which we can assume that the royal court would have not realized he had been assassinated. The Moabites would now go on to face an oppressed life as the tables in that instant had been turned. Ahead, a left-handed assassin had followed God's word and now success and peace followed for many years. Judges 3 verse 27 to 30. When Ahead came to Sirah, he blew a trumpet there in the hill country of Ephraim. The Israelites heard the trumpet and went down from the hills with the head leading them. He said to the Israelites, follow me. The Lord has helped us defeat our enemies, the Moabites. So the Israelites followed Ahead. They went down with him to take control of the places where people could easily cross the Jordan River into the land of Moab. The Israelites did not allow anyone to go across the Jordan River. They killed about 10,000 strong and brave men from Moab. Not one Moabite man escaped. So on that day the Israelites began to rule over the Moabites, and there was peace in the land for 80 years. There are times in life when it seems that things will never change, that you are simply stuck. These moments can rag you down, make you doubt everything you are doing in life. Trying to find your way out of mess or oppression is so hard to do alone. In fact, God tells us many times to not do it all alone. He is there to help us. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He is there walking alongside you. The path may feel hostile and lonely. It may feel like it is never ending and you begin to doubt every step you take. But stop. Pause take a breath, and Isaiah it is written, 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Be comforted today knowing that you are not alone. We are all facing our own path, knowing which way to turn can create a feeling of stagnancy or indecision, but taking one step at a time. Do it knowing no matter how long or how many times it takes you, God will be there with patience, love and strength for you.